This video shows a work-in-progress digital 3D model of the Viking 75 Mars lander illustrating the operation of landing leg mechanisms. Viking was NASA's first project to land a spacecraft on Mars, which occurred in 1976 when two Viking landers reached the surface. The model is being built using the SketchUp software. At this time, the model lacks its many large exterior components. In this view, the legs are folded or stowed to fit within the lander's aeroshell capsule, which protects the lander during hypersonic entry into the Martian atmosphere. When slowed to Mach 2, the aeroshell with heat shield is jettisoned, a parachute is deployed, and the legs are extended in preparation for landing. The legs have a number of major components. The leg primary strut pivots on its boxy primary support fitting via a ball joint. A foot pad makes actual contact with the surface of Mars. The foot pad is rigidly fastened underneath the apex of the right bipod strut beam. Atop the apex, the primary strut pivots on a ball joint. The left bipod is hinged to the right bipod. The inboard end of each bipod pivots via another ball joint on a tapered load limiter. If landing forces are above what the primary strut can absorb, the load limiters will permanently bend inward, limiting shock to the lander. Within the primary strut are components for leg deployment, latching, and shock absorption. To illustrate their functions, the legs are reset to stowed configuration. What appears to be a solid cylinder is a slightly tapered cloth contamination fairing to prevent contamination of Mars by internal leg particles that could be loosened during landing. Such particles could later be picked up with the lander's soil sampler and affect scientific analysis by lander instruments. The fairing is sealed via orange bands to the leg upper and lower caps. The caps are connected by three long rods. Within the primary strut is the large shock absorber or attenuator formed of honeycomb aluminum. The attenuator absorbs landing impact energy by permanent crushing. The striped stroke gauge rod attaches to the attenuator bottom plate and protrudes through the leg top cap. The number of stripes visible after versus before landing indicates how much the attenuator was crushed or stroked. The attenuator is the primary source of possible particulate contamination mentioned previously. The cloth fairing ensures retention of such particles but prevents the hollow leg from venting during launch, cruise, and landing. Two micro filter discs in the top cap enable the necessary venting. The extendable, load-bearing component of the leg is the lower strut tube nested within the hollow attenuator. Within the lower strut is the guide tube. It and a few other components are tinted green in the model to reflect their partly speculative design. Their general nature is correct, but I lack detailed shape references. The guide tube is attached to the top cap and ensures proper sliding extension of the lower strut. Within the guide tube and running the length of the leg is the extension spring, shown schematically here, that forces the leg to deploy upon release. The stowed leg is held in place by a pin puller device on the bottom pivot arm. A pin or rod within the pin puller protrudes through the extendable lower strut and locks into the fixed guide tube. The pin prevents the strut from extending and must withdraw in order to deploy the leg. This is done by two redundant Viking Standard Initiators, or VSIs. A tiny explosive charge in each VSI generates a pulse of gas which flows into the pin puller and presses underneath the pin's head, pushing it in. The leg extension spring can then extend the strut. Four latches within the lower cap hold the leg open. The leg is now fully deployed. About a minute later, the descending lander's foot pad makes contact with the surface of Mars and tries to push the lower strut and latches upward back into the leg. The strut and latches then push a piston and the attenuator assembly upward. Until now, the attenuator has been held down by a large spring under the top cap. As the lander settles onto Mars, the sliding attenuator compresses this spring. The attenuator top plate contacts a plunger on the bottom of the cylindrical terminal engine shutdown switch, or TESS. After slight further movement, the attenuator plate fully depresses the test plunger, triggering shutdown of the lander's three terminal or final descent rocket engines. 
This initial attenuator movement, impeded only by the top spring to prevent early engine shutdown, has not yet absorbed landing impact. When the attenuator's sliding movement tops out under the leg's cap, it begins crushing to absorb energy. After a few inches of crush and less than a second of elapsed time, the landing force is absorbed and Viking is on Mars. The non-elastic honeycomb aluminum prevents rebound. The legs played a critical role in the Viking missions, enabling healthy landers to begin their work on Mars. My thanks to the following organizations who generously allowed me access to Viking resources that facilitated this 3D modeling project. The work-in-progress SketchUp model can be downloaded from Dropbox via this link.